Okay, so everyone can see me. At first, um, welcome, many thanks for your very nice invitation. When I read all the lectures you and uh, all the colleagues you have organized from all over the world, my deep respect for what you have um, for what you have organized. I think it's a lot of work. It sounds very easy. Uh, we just make an uh, international conference, Zoom conference. It is. We are living in hard times, and for that, my deepest respect and many, many thanks. Last week, I had a first um, yes meeting here in Germany with some colleagues. Uh, it was in Homburg Saar, but unfortunately, only with 40 or 50 party 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 patients and. It was not that much. Okay, let me start with the with my presentation. I hope you can see everything. Um, as maybe a lot of people of you know, I do perform endoscopic procedures next year. I do it for already 20 years, and I almost have performed 10,000 endoscopic procedures. And with my colleague, Dr. Hoogland, I have published in... 2007 or 8, um, a study with a endoscopic transformer discectomy for recurrent lumbar discaniations, but only with a follow-up of two years. And now I was looking for something with a little, a little bit prolonged of time, that means in five years. And as you all know, it, it is a lot of work to get all this back to these patients, even if they are satisfied Normally they don't want to to to. Uh, they, normally they don't want to do anything with you as a surgeon, and then you have to, and then you ask them and to find the right email address and all the things. But at least I could finish it. And um, now let's start the presentation. So this is my disclo disclosure. I have my own instruments called by Med to be. It's called Septivation, so if anyone is, say, supporting me or also, because, as you know, it costs a lot, a lot of money to do in scientific work. So at first, let me start. What was the purpose of the study? It was to evaluate the effectiveness and the complication rate of an endoscopic transforminal minimal invasive foraminotomy and discectomy for recurrent lumbar discaniations independent of size, location, and spinal anatomy. So the outcome measurements, it has been a questionnaire, including MacNap, VAS, and the follow-up was always next day, three months, one year, two years, and five years. Uh, something very important, Almost all operations performed in lateral positioning of the patient. It was also possible to do it in prone position, but I personally, for a lot of reasons, I prefer the lateral positioning because I do all my patients, not in general, I think of almost 10,000 patients, I have maybe operated two or three patients in general anesthesia. I do it normally, regularly in um, analgo sedation, and for that, it is much easier and more comfortable for the patient and for the um, anesthesiologist to interact during the operation with the patient. And for the patient, it's more comfortable in a lateral position. But that's my experience. And here you see um, an animation I have um, created for my patients. I don't do it. Full endoscopic, the procedure is performed, is perf I do perform under X-ray control, and then with the instruments uh, of septivation, I enlarge the neuroforam until I see the, until I reach the <coughs> ventral epidural space, and under endoscopic control, the discrimination will be removed. These are, for example, typical pictures. What you see uh, in, in the beginning, yes, you will remove first the disc herniation. You see on the video what's running on the left uh, upper part and at the right lower part, there's a quick nerve root. After it, I remove also from the inside of the disc, 
because what I do perform is the outside in technique and not the inside out technique. Here, another nice case it was a lateral recurrent disc herniation compressing at the upper part. You see the compressing nerve, and here you see the extruded disc still covered from the skin, not really angle ring, and now you can see this is coming out. This, this part was very, what can say, more painful for the patient. This is the outside video, and in that time, a colleague from Netherlands, Dr. Daniel Frimberg, who was listening. Um, it was a lateral discrimination, at least very easy to perform, and took me less than 10 minutes because we do not have to do that much. Or okay, very nice. So, here I will show you now uh, some examples. This was a status after open microscopy um, and hemilamectomy as you may see on the on level L5 S1 on the left side and with um, uh, I, I can't point it with my no I can't point it but as you may see on the on the MRI axial view on the right upper part this is a really huge um, um, bony and past defect with a lot of scar tissue and at the lower part you see my intraoperative control of the forceps to make sure that I'm at the right spot with my discanation uh, with my forceps. Here you see it was a bit tricky um, a discanation compressing in the axilla of the S1 nerve root and a dural sac so transformer, it wasn't that easy. If you perform a transformer, you had to do it like you see on the X-ray control in the middle part of the of the screen. That means I had to uh, to um, perform the procedure a little bit more, not in the caudal part of the neuroforam, a little bit more up and with a bended um, with a bended um, forceps. I could go around the dural sac and remove nicely the discanulation. Here again, um, an intra extra foraminal discanulation level L5 S1 with the control of the forceps. And here, the sorry, this is a picture with the uh, freed nerve root and the removed discanulation. This is a long time ago, a patient with a Crania sequestrated L5 S1 discaniation. Some colleagues they they think you have to do a transiliacal. For me, there's no need to do a transiliacal. Also, this caniation I have removed transforminal. And here you see again the control of the forceps. So I'm at the right spot. Just the approach is not normally transferminal. It is at level L5 as one around 10, 12 centimeters lateral. I have performed only seven centimeters, and this is the reason why I could, could reach the cranial sequestrated disc at level L5 as one. Okay, now we come to this scientific work. At first, uh, very important what have been the inclusion criteria. So I have choose patients with recurrences that developed as a new discaniation with at least a six months pain free interval at the same level, regardless type of operation and numbers uh, and pre operations, primarily radicular symptoms with an acute onset, signs of nerve entrapment, correlation, neuro and neurodiagnostics and symptoms correlating positive MRI and CT. I think like all, that you all do it. And I perform the operation only in one level. Exclusion criteria for the study, herniation in more than one level, patients younger than 18 and older than 80 years. Okay, in the conclusion, that means 576 patients have been operated endoscopically for recurrent herniated discaminations <coughs> in a time period of 12 years. 
543 patients fulfilled the criteria of the studies. 354 had in previous microscopic disc surgery. 189 had in previous endoscopic spine surgery in our center or somewhere else. The follow-up at five years was 439 patients who responded to this, this study. And the, um, <clears throat> the division of female and male have been 29, almost 30% female and 70% male patient, patients. And the average age was almost 50 years. These are the typical levels I have uh, performed. Uh, the majority of the disc herniations we always see in, at level L4, 5, and then 5S1 and the rest. So come, now let me come to complications or recurrence rate after, uh, after a recurrent herniated disc operation again. That means nine patients, almost 2.1% uh, had an, again an early recurrent disc herniation. That means less than three months. The all-over recurrence rate of all this patient have been 9.3%. And that means 41 pa uh, patients of these 439 patients. 34 patients have been treated for a recurrent herniated disc in, uh, in our own center. That means the second recurrent disc operation. 31 again in an endoscopic transforminal disc tectomy or, or procedure and three patients only in a microscopic decompression. Seven patients have been treated elsewhere, one with uh, endoscopically, one fusion, and five micros microscopic decompressions. That is what they have reported, and no case of infection or disease have been seen. Complications, sure. There's, I have seen three nerve root irritations, that means a dysesthesia and low-grade paresis. Uh, I have seen interoperative dual leakage, but it was, it was never given a problem or needed any kind of revision surgery for me. Five peer patients reported an increase of their numbness, no wound infection, and not one nerve damage have been seen. Results after five years on the satisfactions were um, patients' own huge uh, for excellent and good results means uh, for excellent and good results, almost 87%, almost 90% reported in excellent and good results. So I think it's a very, very good uh, uh, result. If, we, if I ask my patients for loss of leg numbness, so there was an, um, an, 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 an vanished or better in almost 84%, only unchanged in 16%, and worsening, um, uh, thanks God, uh, uh, only in 0.7%. We come back to the, to the strengths, leg strengths, so a vanished or a better results, uh, almost the same like with the numbness in the leg, yeah, uh, 87% uh, reported an excellent um, result and unchanged, unfortunately, in 12%. And for McNabb, the excellent and good results, I could see 80.7% of all my patients, only not satisfied uh, and in 3%. If you look to the VAS of back pain and leg pain, there is almost the same good results of 6.6 uh, points what, what uh, had in, uh, patients who reported a better outcome for the back pain and for the leg pain 7.2. Results after five years, something very important I like to ask my patients is a, a sportive activities, not only um, going back to, to work, because in Germany we have a healthcare system that if you are sick, you get your money uh, for a long time uh, supported and you get your money from the government for, for a long time. But something very important for the patients is back to daily activities and sports. 
So preoperative, 256 patients have been active in sport. Postoperative, some 12 patients, uh, you know, 11, uh, 21 patients reported more to do uh, uh, to be active in sports. Unfortunately, from these all patients, 54 patients never returned to their sport activities they did before. After five years, if I ask my patients, you would, if you would go undergo the same operation method again, I think that's what you all know. A lot of patients, really, they will report, yes, I would do it in this uh, procedure again. It's almost 98%. That means in a conclusion, like for normal endoscopic uh, procedures, that, that this study demonstrates again that the endoscopic transdermal discectomy or decompression has a good, also now, because this was a five years follow-up study, a good long-term efficacy for recurrent herniated discs or might even exceed the results of a micro, uh, micro discectomy independent of size of the herniated disc and location of spinal anatomy. Thanks for your attention.